Hello, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, hi, hello, nice to meet you. My name is Carrie. If you've been following along on my recent vlogs, then you know kind of what's happening in life right now, and you know every single video lately has been a vlog style format. And I'm switching things up a little bit this week. I'm feeling called to kind of sit down and chat with you guys this week, so I'm gonna flow with that. And if you are not watching my vlogs regularly and you don't know much about me, my husband and I just recently purchased a homestead in a small town in rural New Zealand. We're living in the countryside, and I'll go into a little bit later in this video how rural we are and kind of the ins and outs of that. And I specifically want to talk about why we chose to live this life. So we've been living at this homestead on two and a half acres for a couple of months now. We moved to New Zealand in January. So this January coming up will be officially a year of us living in New Zealand. We searched for a home for about eight months, eight to nine months actually, and we finally found the homestead of our dreams and we've been slowly but surely renovating it and just enjoying the land that is all around us. There's a beautiful little bee flying past me. I primarily want to start off with the question of that <laughs> my orphaned lamb, Wilson. You might hear him a couple of times. He likes to, to he's, when he sees me, he, he baws at me, so he can see me right now. So just FYI, you might hear that. It's his lunchtime right now, so I will go feed him and come back so that we have less lamb calls in this video. First off, I wanna talk about how rural we are. We are fully considered rural. We have rural post, we don't have the trash come to our house we are completely out of town we're pretty much out of range for the trash people to come by and pick up the trash we are completely on rainwater the whole house is sourced by rainwater which is a blessing living in New Zealand because it rains a lot here I don't know if we'd be able to do it from where we're from I know we wouldn't be able to be completely on rainwater due to major droughts in Los Angeles and all over California. So we are able to be on rainwater collection here fully. We have electricity, we don't have gas. We plan on going solar as soon as we can put that into our budget here after buying this home. We have to wait a little bit before investing in solar because it can be quite pricey, but we do plan in the future to become completely off grid if we are able to, and that's kind of what we're striving to do. We have a couple of neighbors here, so we're not completely isolated, and we are about 15 minutes into town, so we have the convenience of town a short drive away. It ended up being even better than we could have imagined in terms of how much we would like where we're positioned and where our, just where our property is, what it's around, the people that we're around and all of that stuff. So although we are living in the countryside away from kind of civilization, we're also very close to it and we also have some neighbors that we really like. I, I wanna get into why we chose to live this life. I wanna start with number one and that is that it just felt like a calling for me. And this one's kind of the simplest example. I will get into other reasons why um, as we continue on in the video, but number one is that it's always just felt like a calling for me. And I'm not really quite sure why. I was born in Arizona, raised in Nevada. I moved to California when I was 18. So my history is that of the desert. Um, I've always been a desert child and I've always lived suburban. I just always had an inkling that I would end up in the countryside surrounded by nature. It was something I dreamt about. I visualized many times. I would go on Pinterest and I would pin photos. I would always be attracted to that type of lifestyle whenever I would watch a film um, or see photos of that type of life. I cried on the opening credits of Big Little Farm. A lot of people send me that documentary and say, they say, I feel like you would love this. And I just, yeah, I like, I cried in the opening credits because I just knew that I was going to love it. And I did. It's definitely one of my favorite documentaries of all time because it was very much so the story of a couple leaving the entertainment capital of the world and moving to a small 
farm. They stayed within California and didn't move too far from where they were originally from. But that was something that I dreamt up at the beginning. I thought maybe I'd stay in California and move to the countryside. I did not know when I was envisioning this life that I would ever end up in New Zealand doing this life. I ended up meeting my now husband and we are living together here in New Zealand. I feel really grateful because he is a New Zealand citizen, a dual citizen of the US and New Zealand. So because of that we are able to be here in New Zealand and it is beyond <laughs> what I could have even imagined for a country life. New Zealand is absolutely magical. It is a country that I have fallen head over heels for in so many different ways. The people, the landscape, the smells, the sounds, everything about this country has stolen my heart. I'm a bit of a ponderer, so I like to kind of sit back and reflect and try to figure out why I feel called to do certain things or why I feel called not to do certain things. And in some of my reflection and just sort of my me trying to better understand myself, I started realizing that a lot of my ancestors were farmers. An interesting part of this journey that I didn't realize until after we moved into the homestead is that the area that we are living in was settled by Norwegian farmers many, many, many years ago. I'm 50% Norwegian. I have Norwegian farmers in my bloodline. My ancestors were, were Norwegian farmers. They lived very close to the land on plots of land similar to this. They had lots of kids. I don't know as much as I'd like to know about them, but I do know those bits and parts of it. And I know that they were living in Canada, a lot of the Norwegian ancestors in my family, and that they migrated to California. And obviously there were lots of kids, so many other different places. It just felt very aligned in a way that uh, just felt really personal for me because when you move to a new country that you have no connection to, but you end up settling on a place that was settled by 50% uh, of what you are, it, it just, yeah, it just felt special in a way. And that's just an example of listening to those little cues that uh, we get from the universe, just reminding us that we're on the right track. Moving on to the second reason why I chose this type of lifestyle. I wanted to understand what it was actually like to live a lifestyle closer to the land that's better for our planet. I started a vegetable garden at our urban home in Los Angeles. And like I said, I've always wanted to live a life like this, but I think that starting that vegetable garden and seeing kind of the ecosystem that it created in our urban backyard, we were essentially urban farmers. At the time, we had corn growing in our backyard. We had pumpkins. If we would have stayed there, we would have become full-blown <laughs> urban farmers. And I think that what inspired me wanting to understand what it was like to live a life closer to nature, more off-grid, was because of that. Because I saw how beautiful it is to create a backyard that was just grass and concrete into a almost a food forest a place where you could walk outside and pull fruit or vegetables off of a tree or out of the vegetable garden and just eat it right there in your backyard and we started our vegetable garden before covid hit we started it the year before so by march of 2020 we had been growing vegetables for a year so we already kind of had vegetables going we had everything we needed and i actually created a video around that time after a year of growing vegetables called how to build a vegetable garden um, it's one of my best performing videos and i didn't realize it would be but because of the time that I posted it, which was the beginning of coronavirus, I it ended up doing really well. And it really started getting me thinking about how people are so 
dependent on our grocery system and how I just loved growing vegetables in general because I enjoy the process of it. It's, it literally feels like the closest thing to magic that, I mean, there's magic all around us, of course, but we can create this magic by putting a seed in the ground and food grows from the dirt. And to me, there is nothing more magical than that. And that's something that we can do as human beings. We can create that magic. I felt like I found my purpose when I started growing vegetables in my backyard. I felt like I found myself through that. I found something that I loved that was my hobby, was something that kept me away from the noise of the world, that connected me to nature. And it was something that I was yearning to be more connected to nature since I was a child. I remember my most fondest memories of being a little girl was like running through rosemary bushes and smelling of rosemary when I would get back inside the house and just like sitting underneath the tree and seeing the sunlight coming through and like holding a flower and these are the moments that I always remembered they were the most special moments for me I was very lucky to meet my partner Alex who has a very deep connection with nature and is very conscious of our water about trees, knows about our birds, is a bit of a bird nerd, and he also had the yearning to live a life that was better for our planet. My reason number three for choosing this type of lifestyle is because living amongst nature, nature sounds, nature landscape is extremely beneficial for our mental health. And I like to sign up for anything that's wonderful for our mental health. About three years ago, I read a book called The Nature Fix by Florence Williams, and it really opened my eyes to, one, the research that has been done that shows how beneficial nature can be for us as human beings. And due to just the type of lifestyle that society has created over time, we as human beings are living in metropolis, big metropolis areas more than ever before. And although there are many people who love that stimulation and I'm not trying to say that that is not the right type of lifestyle for certain people, I do know though that we as people need to hear sounds of nature. We need silence. We need peace. We need quiet for our mental health. They did a study where a group of people were listening to artificial sounds and then a group of people were listening to nature sounds and the stress of the artificial sounds were higher obviously and then the nature sounds it reduced the anxiety and the stress. We all know that even when we're scrolling on Instagram and we watch something that has nature sounds, it immediately feels soothing to us because as people, we have that yearning because we are of the earth. We are nature. And I think we forget that sometimes. I think we forget that we are part of nature. We eat from nature. We live amongst nature we are part we are we are full of water <laughs> that's why we have the yearning to be amongst it and i think that if more people could hear that yearning and could spend more time at the park or on a walk and less time scrolling or and and trust me i i'm guilty of also being on my phone and i make videos online for a living and i completely understand so i'm not saying that i'm perfect in this in any way shape or form i'm just saying that there is a balance that needs to be created in our lifestyles and i'm not trying to be preachy i'm just telling you the reasons why i chose this type of lifestyle and it's for my mental health and for my future family's mental health and their lifestyle. My husband, I can tell that he's just less stressed living here. We also have so much focus and we feel like we have a purpose in creating this home amongst nature. And 
we just have stuff to focus on and projects that we need to work on every day. So it does give us something to pay attention to and to do every day. And I recently had somebody comment on an Instagram post that I posted of my lamb and my dog like running around together and there were sounds of birds and quiet and she commented and said, don't you get bored in the peace and quiet. And my response immediately was like, not at all. I used to get bored in the city. I felt like I was trapped in the city. I felt like there was just concrete, nothing to stimulate me creatively. And there are people who feel completely different. New York City inspires them creatively. And I understand that. Like, I love New York City and I love going there. And there are just different people, right? There are people who have a yearning for a specific lifestyle. And there are some people who have a yearning for another different lifestyle. And that's what makes the world go around. We're all different. But one thing we do know due to research is that across the board, all human beings need time in nature. We've just decided to make our life amongst nature at all times. And the fourth and final reason why I chose this lifestyle is to push myself out of my comfort zone. I was living in Los Angeles. I was ordering Uber Eats. I was ordering Amazon. I was ordering my groceries. I honestly never even needed to leave my house. I had vegetables growing in the backyard. I was living a life of honestly luxury in terms of just convenience. I could drive four minutes away and be in the middle of all of these mega corporations like Walmart, Target, but I didn't really need to ever go there because I could order anything I needed and it would be there in a day. And my life now is completely different. These every day, every single day conveniences that were in my life before have just been completely removed. And I have to be completely honest, I don't miss them one bit. And my life feels more fulfilling without these drop of a hat conveniences. And I think there's something to that. I think there's something to us having to seek out what we need in different ways, to show up for what we need, to see the effects of what we consume. It's really interesting when you're living that lifestyle. We were obviously living in one of the biggest cities in the United States, and we had every convenience you could have imagined around us at the drop of a hat, even people to come over and hang up a shelf and a matter of a couple of hours they'll be there and you just pay them on your app and then they leave and you have what you needed taken care of. There was no need to try to learn how to do that. It's been life changing to be in a situation where, for example, like I said at the beginning of the video, we don't have the trash coming picking up our trash. We have to take our stuff, the things that we consumed to the dump. We go maybe once a month right now. Obviously, we've only lived here for a couple of months, so we're figuring out exactly how we organize it. And I think because I've had this yearning to live amongst nature, I also had the, the yearning to push myself out of my comfort zone because of course I was afraid of what life would be like, just completely shifted and different from what it was before. Of course I was afraid because comfort is comfort. You know it, it's, it's there. You have your um, conveniences around you and why change that? You're comfortable. There are many reasons why changing, changing things up and trying to go out of your comfort zone and pushing past your limitations is beneficial to yourself and to the planet and all of these um, just different things that it teaches you along the way. There's so much to learn and I am totally still on the path of learning. I have not learned everything that I need to know. Every single day living here, I learn something new about myself and about our planet, about nature, about the world, how things work, about people. And I am so excited and motivated and present in the process of learning more along the way because I've never felt more 
like I, I like I'm supposed to be where I am right now than ever before in my life. I get very passionate about this type of stuff when I'm talking about it and I hope that I come off as passionate and not that I am being preachy to you or telling you you need to live this type of lifestyle. I just get excited when I talk about it. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. You guys are so knowledgeable about different things and I always learn so much from you. Thank you all so much for watching this video and for just being along on this wild journey of life with me. I will see you all very soon in a new video. Thank you for watching. Bye!